John wasn't bowing to me, don't worry. <laughs> Tonight we celebrate the Lord's Supper, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Um, all, every Holy Thursday, you know, that is our focus on this meal. This meal that he invited his apostles to, and he really set up kind of what our lives were going to be about. There's three things that, that took place and three things that we kind of focus on in this celebration of the, the celebration of the, of the Lord's Supper. One, you know, it is that command to serve, that command to be of service where Jesus said, you know what, you're going to serve, not be served. Two, it was the institution of the Eucharist. The institution of the Eucharist. He gave us this so that we might continue to have him in our lives. The third thing was really the institution of the priesthood, where he commanded his apostles to do this, to do this in memory of him, establishing them and ordaining them to be those first bishops, those first priests. So those three things, you know, commanded to serve, instituted the Eucharist, and also instituted the priesthood. Now, that whole idea of service, it, it comes out in the idea about where he began to wash their feet. So let's understand that. Now, mind you, back in Jesus' day, I mean, they didn't have tennis shoes and boots and so, you know, socks. I mean, they basically wore sandals. Your feet were dirty. You know, when you came into the household or when you came to you know, a place where you would join somebody for supper, where you, know, you would celebrate that meal, your feet would get washed. It was usually a servant's job. Not somebody like Jesus would do that. But what does he do? He gets down on his knees. I mean, he gets below them. Not standing up to wash their feet, but gets down on his hands and knees, and he does something that is much beyond him. To set that example, to set that example of what it means to be his follower, the end of this gospel, you just heard it. If you want to be my follower, this is how you live your life as a Christian. Now, does it mean we have to get up and, and wash all of each other's feet every day? I don't think that's going to take place. Steph and I doubt very much that you're going to wash your sister Maria's feet, right? It's not something that's going to happen. <laughs> but what does that look like? What does that call to serve to serve rather than be served, what does it look like? Well, let me tell you what it looks like. It looks like this man right here, Vic, a titan of the business world, but yet around here, it's never beneath him to wash windows. During the weekdays, he's our altar server. At any given time when we need help with cleaning or something, this man, Vic, is there. Sitting next to him is Margaret. You could just kind of sit home and do nothing, I'm sure, Margaret, but no. What does service look like? You know, every Friday, there's a group of them that meet, and all those bulletins that you get, whether they're stuffed or something stapled to them, she's one of the ones that does it. Giving of herself, you know, so that you have that bulletin. You know, what does it look like? It looks like this man right here. I know you're all saying to me, it looks like Spike. <laughs> you know, a man that has a concern for the less fortunate, that gives of his resources so that others might have. He's not just a pretty face that sits up here at Mass. <laughs> In his mind, his heart, it's out to serve. You know, what does it look like? She won't, doesn't like me to pick on her, but I'm going to say Kelly. Do you know very much that Kelly, although there's no flowers back there, but we're not doing it right now, almost every Saturday, she makes sure that there's flowers by the Blessed Mother statue. Did we tell her to do that? No. She actually says that her mother tells her from the grave she has to do it. <laughs> but out of the goodness of her heart, that is what she does. That's what that service looks like. You know, this man, John. I know he was uh, stumbled during that second reading. He's probably too focused on the gospel. But little do people know that uh, this man, you know, goes and visits the sick, visits those people that are shut-ins, 
by taking them communion, by making sure that they have a visit from someone. You know, this lady Pam sitting back there. Oh, you're pointing to your son Stephen, but you know what? She's responsible for making sure all of our plants get watered. A couple times a week, she'll find herself here. I know she's saying, okay, I don't, she always says, I really don't have a green thumb. But that is what she does, above and beyond. You know, I look over there, and Sharon, I know you don't want me to pick on you over there, but uh, she is Bonnie's right-hand lady. You know, she comes in here and dusts the bookshelves, the book racks. That is what she does. She wants to be real quiet about it. I'm sorry I threw you out there, but that is what you do. As I walk through here, I mean, I see person after person. Good old Joan, from day one of, uh, you know, coming here to St. Mark. I mean, I, I found out she's the one behind the prayer chain, and I know I've thrown your name out there before, but, you know, out of the goodness of her heart, how important it is to pray for those in need. Well, she doesn't have to do that, but that is what she does. That's what service looks like. Hale's not here tonight, is he? Oh, there he is. He even got a tie on tonight. <laughs> That's why you threw me for a loop, so. <laughs> that font back there is his ministry. He comes and he takes care of that font to make sure that it is working properly and, you know, that it keeps on going the way it's supposed to. And little does everybody know, every other week, all those things that get collected in that hope in a box, he piles up in his car and he takes it down to Catholic Charities. He takes it down to Catholic Charities. He doesn't have to do that. When we're called to serve, when Jesus says, you know, serve rather than be served, these people are examples in this community of what makes this community a community of service. When Jesus commands us to do that, that's what he's commanding us to do. It doesn't always have to be the big, big things. Sometimes it's just the simple things. Jesus instituted the Eucharist at this Last Supper when he celebrated the Passover, those words that came from St. Paul as he writes to the, the church in Corinth there in that letter. You know, that's about maybe 20 years after Jesus first spoke those words. He was the first one in the New Testament to write about it. Where Jesus didn't just say, you know what, just uh, have a memory of me. I mean, he took that bread. He took that wine. And he didn't say, I just want this to be a symbol for you. He gave us something so that we could have something tangible, that we could be filled with his body, we could be filled with his blood, so that when we leave here, we don't just have a part of him up here, but we have a part of him in all of our being. And whenever I, I do a funeral, one of the things I do is I, I talk at the very end of it about, you know, you know keep telling the stories. Keep, you know, laughing and crying about this person because it's all part of it, but that's what keeps that, that, the spirit of that person alive. Jesus didn't just do that. He gave us this bread. He gave us this wine. It became his body. It became his blood. Vatican II calls it the source and summit, the source and summit of our faith. It's from that Eucharist. It's from that body. It's from that blood that all else flows that we are fed, that we are nourished, that our lives change. As I always say, don't just go through the motions. When you receive that Eucharist, you've got Jesus inside of you. I tell you, it was, it was uh, you know, so powerful. I know Father Dave and I, you know, talk a lot about this, but, you know, during that 2020 spring, we all know what happened. Church was shut down. We creatively came up with a way <laughs> that Jesus could still be brought to you by celebrating liturgy here. And we did something a little bit unorthodox, but we had drive through communion. <laughs> and let me tell you, we didn't know how well it was going to go. We didn't know how well it was going to be received. But I still remember Easter Sunday. Somebody wrote it down. Tim wrote it down. On Easter Sunday, about 370 cars, cars, came through to receive Jesus. 
We had people come all the way from Petoskey, people down in Livonia when they found out about it. We didn't, weren't trying to become, you know, pat us on the back and see what great things we're doing. We just knew that desire, that desire for the Eucharist, how important that was because it changes lives. It's up to you. No magic wand is ever waved. But Jesus is present, and Jesus becomes a part of our lives. He instituted that on this night 2,000 years ago so that we could always have him with us. Not just a memory, but something tangible. It was at that meal that he also looked at his apostles, and he said, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. For that priesthood was instituted. All of us have known incredible priests throughout our lives, dedicated priests throughout our lives. I've been so fortunate in my ministry you know, sir, to serve with some incredible priests. I've been blessed with, you know, in, in 2019 when this guy decided to retire, you know, and he shows up. I have saw a lot of passionate priests that don't do this as a job, but they do this as a life. I'm going to tell you, I'll embarrass them, but that's okay, because that's what I do. <laughs> we all know. Amen. <laughs> we all know the journey that he's on. You know, it's a tough journey. He knows it. We're all walking it, trying to walk it with him, trying to make it a little bit easier by giving us that support. And I'm fortunate to hear some things that, you know, he shares with me as he meets with his doctor or, you know, just different things he's going through. And I don't know, about a month ago, his doctor asked him, was he still doing this? You know, doing his priest stuff? And he said, well, yes. And the doctor looked at him and said, I'm trying to save your life. And Father Dave, without much hesitation, just looked right at him and said, that is my life. You know, I know a lot of priests that because of that night 2,000 years ago, they've embraced that, that call to serve, that call to bring the Eucharist to others, that call to be with people, to bring Jesus to others, to be that role model. You know, we're fortunate to have that priesthood that began tonight 2,000 years ago. Today we celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper, but we celebrate our lives of service, we celebrate this Eucharist that's been given to us, we celebrate the lives of these men that don't just look at it as a job, but they look at it as a life.